Liberty Fighters Network. 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 Good day, liberators and fellow South Africans. I should have made this video a long time ago. It's time to finally put a lid on this spot. And if anyone is going to raise this issue with me ever again, I'm going to block you from all our platforms. Really, um, this issue has become very irritating to me. I've explained the correct position many times before. And if you are still one of those who believe that South Africa is registered as a corporation in the United States of America. And that is your biggest argument uh, against this entire new world order that we are fighting against. Please listen to this video, um, follow it up till the end, and then decide again whether you believe that South Africa is registered as a corporation in the US of A. Now, why is this relevant to also race? Unfortunately, that all of us who are activists and we are pursuing and we are really doing our best to prevent the new world order or this one world order, whatever you want to call it, to take over and manipulate our lives and take away our freedoms. Um, if you're one of those who's, who's aligned with, with our position, you need to listen to this very carefully because, unfortunately, our enemies are creating obstacles. They, they are putting uh, certain arguments in our minds, and uh, which is obviously propaganda. And, and because it is a very comfortable position for us, we tend to accept it as a truth because it's in line with what we are doing. And then at the end, at, 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 the, at the stage where it really matters, when those arguments are then put forward, it's easily um, refuted and, and debunked. And then it's not that individual who's actually suffering and who will be made um, um, or will be ridiculed. It's the entire group who's trying to oppose this new world order. And we are then, because of that argument that you are presenting, which can be easily debunked, you are actually assisting the enemy in their arguments against us. And then we are tinfoil hatters and conspiracy theorists because they've got to prove that we are arguing stuff that's not supposed to be there. So let me, this is a very important matter of is South Africa registered as a corporation in the USA? Let me start off with showing this um, this complaint. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm just quickly going to uh, an old um, News 24. Yes, yep, yep, in mainstream media. But 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 this is one of uh, on the 25th of April, April 2016. Why is the Republic of South Africa registered as a corporation? This is a question someone has raised. Then. Why is the Republic of South Africa registered as a corporation with the Securities Exchange Commission in the USA? When a friend told me that it was, I told them that I didn't believe them, but he told me to Google the Republic of South Africa CIK number 00009324199. Uh, I did, and so sure enough, there it was. A company registered in that name. I sent several emails uh, to the South African Treasury Department and got no response from them. I wanted to alert them that besides copyright infringement, there may be a corporation out there masquerading as representing the Republic of South Africa. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing uh, and you will see why. Um, it raised a lot of questions for me. Why would the Securities Exchange Commission register a company in the name of a sovereign country? Who are the shareholders of this corporation? Who are their representatives? It boggles the mind that there is a corporation out there trading in the name of the Republic of South Africa with a CIK number. There is an opportunity for widespread corruption and fraud if their representatives are not legitimate. 
Now, <laughs> yo, I, I, I'm, I'm laughing and you will, uh, you, you will realize why I'm, I'm actually laughing because this is actually pathetic. And I don't care whether, as always, um, I'm, 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 I'm calling a, a spade a spade. And I don't mind if people are going to be so disgruntled that they're going to leave our platforms and stop supporting us because I'm telling the truth. Um, I, I, I honestly don't care because this is an issue that's important because the fact that we are apparently a corporation in the United States of, of America or there's a corporate or South Africa is registered as a corporation. Now, because of that, these um, supporters of the, the natural law, common law, emancipation, etc., etc., they are actually using United States of America legislation to justify many of the, the things that they are doing in terms of emancipation or using or um, for the straw man, for the natural living, breathing person or uh, individual. Now, um, specifically, they are using the UCC and I will come to that just now. But let me go on and just explain. Now, let's go to the Securities Exchange Commission of the United States of America. Now, here it says that Edgar Company Fighting, CIK, look up the central index key, CIK. So that number, which that other person, unknown person have, have referenced, is a CIK number. So it stands for Central Index Key, is used on the CSEC's computer systems to identify corporations, to identify corporations and individual people who have filed disclosure with the CSEC. Uh, SEC. Now, let me just quickly go. What is the Edgar? Okay, now there it is. Now, what is electronic data gathering analysis and retrieval? Edgar. Edgar. So it's a it's an acronym for electronic data gathering analysis and retrieval. Now, electronic data gathering analysis and retrieval is the electronic filing system created by the SEC to increase the efficiency and accessibility of corporate filings. The system is used by all publicly traded companies when submitting required documents to the SEC. Corporate documents are time sensitive and the creation of EdCard has greatly increased the time it takes for corporate documents to become publicly available. Now, let me quickly go back to that. And before I go, let me just um, uh, clarify a couple of things. So, this CIK number is a reference number regarding the filing of certain um, prescribed documentation on the SEC system known as EDGAR. So, it's not a registration number for a corporation. It's a reference number for filing purposes. Okay, now let, let me just go into this this uh, very controversial issue. Now, um, when you go onto the system, and um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and find the uh, Republic. I've searched it before, and I submitted. Oh, okay. Um, so let me just get this into the picture. Okay, there it says that Company name, company, okay, I will get to that. Republic of South Africa, and then a CIK number. Okay, now the, 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 the problem that people are fallaciously referring to is that now it says that there's a company name, Republic of South Africa, which is not correct. Now let's go to the Edgar filing of, of this company. Now, um, what these people don't show you is that there is um, the one for the Republic of South Africa, filer. It's a filer, okay, with that CIK number. And then, <laughs> um, but down here, um, the SIC, double eight, double eight, foreign governments. Foreign governments. Now, uh, <laughs> people, um, yeah, let, let me just quickly go back there. Now, um, let's, let, let's just do a... Uh, now, now the CIK number is apparently the registration number of the corporation called the Republic of South Africa. Now, let's say uh, um, People's Republic of China. Well, just for an example, submit. 
Oh my golly wally. Company name People's Republic of China and there is its CIK code. Um, people, if you really think that the United States of America owns or has got or is overseeing the corporation of the Republic of or the People's Republic of China, um, who's, who's most probably the, the most or the, actually the most powerful nation in the world. Um, we all we are made to believe that it's the US of A, but it's actually most probably China. But if you really think that China is registered as a corporation in the USA and that the, the United States of America legislation is then automatically applicable on, on the corporation of the People's Republic of China, um, I, I'm, I really pity you, really. Um, let, let, let's just quickly go to that 8888 um, reference um, and then you'll see what it is. Um, I, I'm just going to press it. Okay, there it is. So it's foreign governments which are registered to do business in America on, uh, and that is why they have to file their returns and, and uh, their, in, their financial information to the America, to the US of A, to the SEC in order to do business there. There's a list of all other countries who are Canada, Canada people, Canada is also there. Um, uh, Japan, Development Bank of Japan. Um, then Federal Republic of Nigeria, Federal, so, so there's the list that it's registered as a government. It's not registered as a corporation, it's registered as a government. So the CIK number has got nothing to do with the fact that the Republic of South Africa is registered as a corporation in the United States of America. Please stop that. And let me just show you also further. A very important matter, um, the UCC. Now, what is the UCC? Because that is a, a code that is constantly used by those who propagate um, the natural law and, and common law principles. And I've indicated that I don't have a problem with that, but they are using it incorrectly. And it cannot be enforced in South Africa at this point in time. So if you are being misled by you are law and uh, a lady by the name of Anne Verster, etc., etc., to believe that that uh, you can use the UCC against um, the, the, the banks and against South Africa in the moment when you file these all these documents, you have disconnected yourself from the Republic of South Africa and its system. Um, th that's a bunch of crap. Um, uh, and, and, and I challenge people like Anne Verster on a one-to-one -one live chat of her choice to, um, to, 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 uh, to challenge me on that issue. Um, she has most probably never seen the inside of a court ever and then she wants to um, explain to the people how to emancipate themselves or disconnect themselves from the system. But in any case, Uniform Commercial Code. The Uniform uh, Commercial Code, UCC, First published in 1952 is one of a number of uniform acts that have been established as law with the goal of harmonizing the laws of sales and other commercial transactions across the United States through UCC adoption by all 50 states, the District of Columbia and the territories of the United States. So the UCC stands for the Uniform Commercial Code. And um, now, <laughs> how does a code that is applicable in the United States of America apply to South Africa and that has been used constantly, UCC and article section whatever, uh, in their papers you will see this. Um, it's totally incompetent people, please. Um, just like South African law has got nothing to do with the Americans, their laws are totally irrelevant in South Africa as well. And let me just quickly explain the difference between local law, local law, very simple. It's it's law that applies and statutes, regulations, rules, practices, etc., etc., which all apply to the Republic of South Africa. It's national legislation, provincial legislation, bylaws of local governments. Uh, that that is local law, local law. Now um, let me just go to the Constitution of South Africa, so that I can explain the issue of 
Now, um, section 39, interpretation of the Bill of Rights. Now, it says, when interpreting the Bill of Rights, a court tribunal or forum must promote the values that underlie an open and democratic society based on human dignity, equality, and freedom, must consider international must, must, so it's obligatory, must consider international law, and may, so it's not obligatory, it can or it cannot consider, may consider foreign law. Now, um, when one goes to, um, I've explained local law, international law is any law that is internationally recognized. So it's law which, for example, the United Nations have promulgated um, their conduct or their, 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 their codes, their, their charters, etc., etc. So that must be considered, must be considered. So it's it's mainly um, law that is uh, that applies to more than one country through agreements that they have reached. So um, we have agreed to the United Nations Charter. We have subscribed to it. So um, all the laws which are created by the United Nations are automatically to be considered as international law in our local law. So we need, uh, must, the courts must consider it. But when it comes to foreign law, that may be considered. It's law that's from another territory, from another country, like, for example, America. So our courts are not obliged to follow foreign law, especially if that we've already got our own commercial legislation and practices, which we need to follow in our country, and then also these international treaties and international law that we must also abide by, must abide by. So foreign law, the UCC is not applicable in South Africa unless a court one day might consider it to be used to interpret a certain Bill of Rights clause in our own constitution. So people, I hope that you now have realized that South Africa is not registered as a corporation in the United States of America. The reference number, it's a reference number for filing purposes. So for South Africa to do business in the United States of America on their stock exchanges, etc., etc., they need to file, just like any other company, they need to file their audited financial statements by the Auditor General um, and also their financial affairs as prescribed, as needed in America. The same applies to the United States of America in South Africa. So if, if they would like to do business in South Africa, they also need to, to comply with certain conditions and terms that we are setting for it to do that. So it's not uncommon for any country to, um, to, believe, or to, to be compliant with conditions and terms which are set by a certain country in order to do business there. It's not uncommon. It's used all over the world. So it's in fact a good practice to safeguard your country of any, any way of, uh, of, of manipulation of the markets, etc., etc. Um, and I'm not saying that, that I'm pro of or I'm, I'm supportive of, of this entire commercial system and the trading that's going on. I know uh, we've, we, I've been outspoken to say that we need to reform not only the judiciary, but also the, the markets, the, the trade you know, the, the, of, of, of South Africa. But the fact of the matter is that um, we are not owned by the United States of America. We, we are not compliant to their foreign law. Uh, we, we, so, so let's just please forget that. Um, yes, people, and I, I'm, I'm, I know what you are saying, that South Africa is still connected to the British, uh, the United Kingdom. Um, we have never received full independence. Um, Hendrik Verwoerd was the one who tried to to make South Africa totally independent from the UK. But unfortunately, as you know, that he has been assassinated by their agents. And at the end of the day, he has been dealt as the so-called um, architect of apartheid, which is totally fallacious. But the fact is that, yes, um, we are called a state because of the fact that 
uh, we are basically the late estate of the king of the United Kingdom. Um, a president and a king always after he or she dies, lies in state. So what we are, we are a state because we are basically the late estate that's still carrying on in South Africa. Um, I always use the example that um, there's a guy by the name of Sir Francis Bacon in England, uh, well, a couple of hundred years ago. He was actually the, um, he's very much considered to be the father of the legal fraternity. Um, and strangely enough, let me just go to him um, so that you can go and Google him and, and read up. It's very important to have, um, uh, to, to, to know Francis Bacon and, and what he did and how he did it. And he was, as you would see, that he was basically the, the, um, the, the minister of justice uh, for the king at that point in time. And, but, but in any event, um, so when you read through this, uh, you will realize that um, th there's this story that uh, that William Shakespeare was was never the was never a real person. It was actually an alias for someone. And then uh, it's uh, the the the, uh, the Baconian theory of Shakespeare authorship. So it's there, there's a theory. It's not confirmed that Sir Bacon was actually Shakespeare. And uh, from the um, from the the the, the uh, uh, portraits that were apparently painted of uh, William Shakespeare resembles a lot Sir Francis Bacon and also the things that he's, he, he uh, wrote about. But very important, the relevance of this is that in one of Shakespeare's plays, and, and this could be or could not be Sir Francis Bacon, but uh, very interesting um, for you who know uh, Shakespeare and specifically Hamlet, uh, there's a very famous saying that um, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Um, and, and that was said by Merciless um, when you know, commenting on what the ghost's appearance may, may mean. Um, and what is relevant here is that um, it's talking about the state of Denmark, knowing that the King Hamlet just passed away. So why would the name state be used in a kingdom? So that is most probably an indication that a state is the the estate of the dead king that still continues so that is my opinion about why we are called a state so we are basically continuing with a unwounded up estate of the dead king or in his dead form whether he exists or not at that point in time so in order to get out of the state in order to wound up the late estate of the United Kingdom's monarchy in South Africa, we need to change our constitution and take out the word state. Uh, we are not a state. We are not a dead, um, dead late estate of a king. So we need to fix that from our constitution. We need to take that out, that we are not a state. We are a sovereign country with a government, meaning that it is the people or individuals who are running the country. That is what a government is. A government is also not an entity. Um, it's actually the referring to the act of governing. That's a government. But in any case, people, I will make a lot, a lot of videos about this. Hopefully, you have come to the conclusion that you agree with me that there is no such thing that the South African Rep Republic of South Africa is a corporation registered in the United States of America. God bless. Until the next time. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network.